final home game for Syracuse football this season season senior day that's what that means against florida state in the dome saturday and john wildhack had some things to say about who might be walking doing that senior walk around the perimeter of the field we'll talk about all that and more it's locked on syracuse it's right now our locked on syracuse your daily podcast on the syracuse orange part of the locked on podcast network your team every day Matt Bonaparte, Owen Valentine with you on your Thursday episode. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for making Lockdown Syracuse your first listen every day. We're free. We're available wherever you get podcasts. And today's episode is brought to you by Upside. Download the free Upside app and use promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Uh, We're talking Florida State today. We're talking Senior Day today. Uh, there's a decent amount to talk about as Owen, you sent me a tweet and I'm sure plenty of people have seen said tweet by now that said, I don't have it in front of me, but I will paraphrase. It said that John Wildhack said to somebody else that there will be some surprises about who, which juniors are going to be doing the senior walk on this Saturday, meaning there are going to be some surprises to Uh, Some surprises to fans as to who is potentially leaving the team this season, uh, part of that junior class. So what I'd like to do is walk through every junior and redshirt junior on the team, and let's try to speculate who might be in that conversation that Wild Hack is referring to. So I begin, Michael Jones, Garrett Schrader, Jason Simmons Jr., Matthew Bergeron, Anthony Queeley, Yosuke Sugano, Carlos Vettorello, Christopher Bleich, Demarcus Adams, Caleb Okachukwu. That's the whole list. So that's a lot of names. Aside from Yosuke Sugano, I've seen all those people play football. Uh, and those are that's a, a good group of guys who really impact this team and really define what the last couple of years of Syracuse football has been. So there's certainly something to be said uh, about that. Who do you see? I mean, obviously, I think Michael is probably gone, right? That's what we have to assume is Michael is probably gone. He's going to go to the NFL. That guy is an absolute beast. I'm thinking next up, Bergeron is probably on his way. Uh, That guy is really, really good. Had a fantastic season last year. He's been the best part of a bad offensive line this year and i think he probably wants to be off to bigger and better things as well uh and then the list really tapers off there i'd say the biggest name besides those two guys is garrett schrader i don't see him going anywhere but how about caleb okachukwu on the defensive line uh my thing is and do are we not talking garrett williams here or is he considered i don't see i think he's considered not that He's a redshirt sophomore, technically. I, yes, I, I guess so. But it but is year COVID three. Year. But it is That's year why. three, and yes. he is on his way out of here. I would very much assume. I think he's going to be doing uh, that. To add as well. to that list, uh, I, I think you know, Michael is, is the name on that list that obviously is the most set in stone. I would assume makes the most sense. We were surprised he came back this year, right? And he comes here and returns as a great year. I don't know if we were year. surprised, but there was definitely conversation. Yeah. Where, well, there was a chance he was going to leave. Yeah. And well said. Yeah. Well said. And you know, he comes back and and performs this year and delivers and really has been outstanding. And so I I, I think you would assume that he he makes the jump this season. Bergeron, I know early-ish in the season was really climbing lists and, and drawing some eyes i'd be curious to see sort of where he falls in terms of rankings right now uh one thing i believe i saw some additional commentary from wild act on the fact that this oh wow continue owen 
I believe I saw some additional commentary possibly from Wild Hack about how this might not necessarily mean that they're leaving for what that's worth, uh, that they might yeah, just I be walking with the team. Uh, I don't think you walk with the team on senior day if you plan on coming back and experiencing your own senior day. I also Seems read that. A little I guess odd. I read that as there are guys who might this Saturday think they're leaving and don't want to take any chances, but might decide later on that they want to stay. That's how I took it. Yeah, that, that makes sense as well. So maybe the list is a little bit more extensive. Some guys are going to see, you know, some next couple of weeks what happens. It was an interesting comment. And it's something that I didn't really consider, but it is worth seeing who takes that lap on Saturday because it, it is telling of their mindset at this point, their mentality uh, moving forward. And I, I think there is a lot to be, to be looked at from the information that we can gain from who takes that lap. Uh, I don't know. I look at Garrett Williams. I see him as, as a goner. Um, I look at Michael. I see him as a goner. I look at Sean Tucker. I assume he is still leaving while the draft stock exists, even though he has had, you know, a, a, a difficult year, a different year than a lot of us expected. Uh, I know Emily Liker on Syracuse.com released a great article yesterday when this comes out uh, that sort of detailed his statistical drops uh, from last year to this year. If you get a chance, check that out. It's uh, really good in terms of the numbers and definitely looking at the lack of explosiveness that he's had this year. And that is something that I, you know, when you, when you're in that spot, it's that tough decision of, you know, I can come back for one more year and perform how I was and how we know I can play, or do I go, well, I still have some security and there is, you know, I, I'm going to get drafted in theory based on rankings and based on where I am, but one more year could improve the draft stock. How does, you know, that's a decision that <laughs> my lack of athleticism would never make me pick, uh, but it is, it's a difficult choice. And, you know, you see guys come back and their draft stock improves significantly and you see guys come back and they have another down year. And then there's a lot more questions and you're another year older and there's a lot more to consider. So I assume Sean Tucker is still leaving after this season, but there's much more of a conversation to be had this time around than I think we, we would have assumed coming into the year. Certainly. Um, I think you're absolutely right about that because everybody assumed he was going to be fantastic and have even, I mean, Dino said he was better. Don't forget yeah. that Dino harped all training camp long about how he's better. And people said, how is he better? He's stronger. He's faster. He's better. He works hard. He didn't leave. He stayed for Christmas. He was here, whatever. It didn't look that much better to me uh, or anybody else. And that's why we're even having the conversation of does he maybe take another season here, uh, which I don't see. But like you said, it's still a possibility and we didn't expect it to be. Um, I think Okachukwu is, is – oh, go ahead. Sure, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say uh, I, I sort of left Bergeron off the list. I know he's he's at that level. I don't know if he's getting that attention at this point still. Um, but definitely a guy that I think – you know, fits the criteria of maybe takes the walk yeah. as an insurance policy. Yeah, I, I think you're right about that as well, because if you're looking at the group that I just read, which I'll remind you is includes names such as Michael Jones, Garrett Schrader, Jason Simmons is interesting. People forget he came to Syracuse because he saw DBU, Andre Sisco, Ifatu Melifonwu, and Trill Williams all go to the NFL. He transferred here because of that. Uh, and then Bergeron, Queely, Vetterello, Blyche, Adams, Okachukwu. Uh, of those guys, I'd say Bergeron's next up in terms of NFL probability. He's definitely in that group and, and of guys who have an actual chance at playing in the NFL uh, right up there next to Michael Jones. So uh, if I had to guess, those two guys might be the surprises. But, I mean, you guys make your own guesses as to what they may be. But uh, for now... We'll have to wait until Saturday, uh, but let's take a quick break. On the other side, we will do some previewing of Florida State, see what they have, uh, see what the Seminoles are working with this season, how they've played, how Syracuse might match up. But first, let me tell you about 
upside. Inflation has us all thinking about different ways to cut back, whether it's driving less, dining out less, or buying less from the grocery store. We can all agree there's nothing fun about less. That's why you got to start using Upside. It's an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. With Upside, you don't have to cut back because you get cash back on every purchase. To get started, download the free Upside app, use promo code LOCKED, and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Next, claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside. Check in at the business, pay as usual with a credit or debit card, and get paid. In comparison to credit card rewards or loyalty programs, you can earn three times more cash back with Upside. Upside users are earning more than a million dollars every week. That's probably why they have a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. Download the free Upside app and use promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using promo code LOCKED. All right, we continue here on Lockdown Syracuse. Uh, talking about Florida State as they come to town for SU's final home game of the football season. Can Owen, I jump do you on? have something to say? Sure. Yeah, I just wanted to, to finalize that. You know, if you look at – I'm on NFLDraftBuzz.com because um, they have positional rankings for – sponsor. They do not a sponsor lot more, A lot more guys uh, than some of the, you know, big boards, which are going to be your top 100s. They've got Garrett Williams at 57, which puts him as a late second right now. Uh, and then Sean Tucker at 165 and Bergeron at 167, which puts them at, you know, mid to late day three guys in terms of where those numbers would fall. Uh, of note, they have Michael Jones at 391, which does not really scream draftable. Um, which I think seems low, but it is what it is. It is. I think that is low for the leader of a really, really solid defense. Yeah. Uh, this year, one that is currently 15th in the country in terms of opponents points per game. Um, but we'll see. Yeah. Just to wrap um, that up. Sorry. No worries. Let's go on. Talk some Seminoles. Uh, these guys have had a really Good year, uh, considering Mike Norvell's first two lackluster years uh, at state. They have won six games and lost three, as Syracuse has done the same. Uh, though they beat Duquesne in their first game, LSU, Louisville, and Boston College after that. Then a three-game skid against Wake Forest, NC State, and Clemson and then picked up two more wins against Georgia Tech and Miami. So they don't lose to unranked teams, and they don't beat ranked teams. That's what I get from that, um, which doesn't bode well for the unranked Syracuse going in to Week 10. Uh, but they also haven't had great luck on the road. I mean, Miami, they crushed last week 45-3 to on the road, but they lose on the road to NC State in that game. Uh, back in early October, and then they only beat Louisville on the road in week three, 35-31, or I guess that's actually week two, game three for them. Um, so they haven't played great on the road, uh, aside from their last game, uh, but I wouldn't dig too much into that. Let's talk about personnel for them. Jordan Travis is under center calling plays. He's had a really, really solid year, an interesting uh, kind of trajectory in terms of his collegiate career started at Louisville behind Jawan pass and Malik Cunningham tried to battle it out there instead transferred to Florida state finally got a chance to start last year, except Mackenzie Milton also showed up at Florida state and there was a little bit of a quarterback battle there. One that Jordan Travis swiftly won due to some injuries. Uh, and now he is, you know, he's the man at the top of the totem pole. 17 touchdowns this year, four interceptions, over nearly 63% completion, over 2,200 passing yards. He's had a really, really solid year uh, and has uh, some pretty good weapons around him. A three-man backfield of Trey Benson, uh, Lawrence Tofili, and Treshawn Ward. There's some real talent on this team. Yeah, and I... You know, when I look at this team and we, you talked about the quarterback situation with Jordan Travers, who really is, or Travis, having such a great year, honestly, uh, and something that 
you know, I don't think we, we really knew what he was capable of. And he, he's come in and, and balled out in year five. And it's really been impressive to see. I think he is going to be a good test for Syracuse. And this is by no means, you know, as easy a game as you might have thought it was going to be. I know when we look at this preseason schedule, this Florida State game was a bit of the lull maybe, but also we thought they could be very good. No, we didn't. I won't lie. I was about uh, to say, was, I did not think the they end. were going to be good. Yeah, it was the end yeah. of the of the tough stretch. And, and this has been an adjustment that Florida State has rightfully so risen into the top 25 because they, they continue to do the job, right? You're saying they're not beating ranked teams, but they're winning against non-ranked teams. For a team of Florida State stature, for a team of Syracuse stature, that's what you need to do. That's what you're supposed to do uh, in theory. And Florida State has done that job, and that's why they are where they are in terms of ranking, and that's why Syracuse has fallen out of the top 25. But Jordan Travis, I, you know, it didn't really hit me, and he honestly didn't even play that good a game. But watching him play against NC State was the first time I really did watch him, and he gave the NC State defense a lot of issues with his ability to run, which is not always something that he does. He runs enough. He's got uh, like over 200 yards on the ground on the year, um, but in 50 rushing attempts. So what does that do it in terms of math? Just about five a game. Uh, so he gets out and moves when he needs to, and it's been successful in certain spots. And, and that's what I saw against NC State, and he was really able to, to cause them a ton of issues on the ground, which is something that he doesn't always do. But it's it's a guy that that has the capabilities to really – get after you and, and make you make tough decisions. And he's had a great season. So I, I'm very impressed with what he's done because I think this Florida State team is, has risen with him 100% this season. And, and they have shocked people to be where they are right now. And I think, you know, three weeks ago, you would list Syracuse and Florida State together as teams in the ACC that really shocked everybody. Totally. Uh, and not that Syracuse still is I still think Syracuse people. is in that group. Yes, 100%, but Florida State has maintained their level, whereas Syracuse has phased Well, they out had a, a three-game losing streak. Yeah, true. So they just yeah. came back. They bounced um, back, so could Syracuse. Exactly. Um, I also want to mention on this offense, there isn't really a huge player other than Travis. I mean, he is the best player on the offense. Uh, you could argue the injured Treshawn Ward is in that caliber as well. He hasn't played since the NC State game in which he got injured. Uh, I'm not sure if he will play this week. Um, but what that is, what that means is that it's a really spread out attack and there's a lot of guys that can hurt you. On the ground, there have been seven guys who have punched the ball into the end zone. Through the air, there have been 10 guys. So uh, that offense is really spread out and there are plenty of guys that Travis can go to um, to make plays, uh, though maybe none of them are superstars. It doesn't necessarily matter if he has a ton of guys. Um, but that's all I got on the offense. Let's take a quick break, and we'll talk defense. But first, let me tell you about Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer and esports. We've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at Bet Online as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. All righty, let's continue talk some defense uh, of the Florida State Seminoles. FSU, another really talented defensive team this year, going by the same rudimentary standard metric that uh, is not at all advanced, points against. Uh, they are 22nd in the country out of 131 teams, so that's only seven spots behind Syracuse. Um, there are a lot of good players on this defense. Owen and I were debating the pronunciation of Jamie Robinson, Right before this podcast, he's an incredibly talented uh, defensive back in that secondary. Uh, there are just a lot of guys who can make plays out there. 
12 guys on this team have recorded a sack this season. Jared Verse, uh, paramount on this defense. He's got five and a half of them, 12 tackles for loss and 30 tackles on the season. He has been fantastic. He's also a huge leader on this team, which I think is worth mentioning as well. Do you know he was an Albany transfer from you? I think I, I did know that because I saw him at ACC media day and somebody from Syracuse, I believe asked him about that. Oh yeah. Well, uh, you did nail it. I think when you were talking with Jamie Robinson, who, who is sort of the biggest name, I think he's a returning all ACC guy. Uh, he, he's outstanding and he, he leads this team in tackles and I think he does a really good job. Uh, but this defense is very much solid. And when you look at the rankings and you see what they've done, they're a top 20 defense. Uh, in terms of yards per game, and they they put teams into difficult spots. I will say, uh, you know, we we talked a little bit down on Sean Tucker earlier in this episode. Florida State, when you break it down, much more solid defending the pass than they are defending the run. Uh, so good that news could for leave, Syracuse. Yeah, that could leave a good opportunity for Syracuse, uh, a good opportunity for Sean Tucker, and uh, you know if. I don't know what the Schrader situation is at this point. Uh, whoever is quarterbacking, uh, good news to be able to get out and move, get outside the pocket, uh, and and force teams into tough spots because this the Florida State run defense has been beaten this year, uh, and I think that's probably what presents Syracuse the best chance because this Florida State secondary is legit. They do a darn good job, uh, and they are – you know, one of the better secondaries that you're going to go up against in the ACC this season. And I'm sure I don't have to remind anybody of the woes on the ground that Syracuse had against Pitt. They were absolutely brutal, just 25 yards on the ground, or 26, this one says, as a team. Uh, they were lethal. I mean, they're in a bad way. I mean, they were really, yeah. really bad. Uh, Sean Tucker just had 19 yards on 10 carries and the other came from 14 attempts from Carlos Del Rio Wilson, seven yards. Um, so an opportunity against a lesser run defense, though, not one I'd say is bad. They're just not as no. good as Pitt's front was uh, for Syracuse to maybe take advantage of something in this game. Uh, I think it's going to be really important, as we've said so many weeks now, to the point it's getting redundant. And I have to even say this. But it's going to be important for them to uh, make the offense versatile and, and try and find a way to shake defenses up because they're getting so beatable right now. And you kind of hope that Syracuse has a game in it like they did in 2019 where they came out and beat Duke and nobody expected to them to. Yeah. Um, but who knows? Uh, it's just it's the kind of game where – I don't think people have the greatest of expectations or the highest of hopes, but Syracuse can always shock you. Um, so you have that in your back. Yeah, 100%. That's something that, you know, I'm looking at right now and I'm trying to see what can happen. And I, I want to stay optimistic because this is a big win for Syracuse, regardless of what the last three weeks have said. This is a game you want to come out and win. It's senior day. It is your last home game of the season. It is sort of the, you know, the, the damage control game. It really is. You, you've got to put, um, I don't know, something up because the, the, the house is flooding right now and all of the faucets are on. So you're going to have to start turning some off uh, to keep some things going on uh, and keep some things under control because it is, it's been a bad skid for Syracuse and nobody Terrible. Um, in their right mind would try and argue otherwise. Uh, it is, it's been bad and you, you need to come out and prove something this week that, you know, you can win in the month of November. Uh, you can play after the bye week that you can come out and make adjustments because there are adjustments that need to be made uh, on this team. It needs to happen because this is a game where despite the overperforming, despite the six and O start, you lose a fan base when you drop this game, I think, for the remainder of the football season, um, barring bowl game celebration. And it is unfortunate. Say, bowl game, people are going to be pumped regardless. Yeah, uh, it's unfortunate. 
given the start that we are, and I, I don't think I'm exaggerating by saying you lose the fan base with a fourth straight loss because of, you know, the way the last three have looked. Sure. Sure. Um, I don't doubt that. Uh, before right, we end, well, before sure. we end, shout out Syracuse men's soccer. Heck Good yeah. For them. Good, Good for, for them. Syracuse football. Yes. They just advanced the to the championship. ACC championship. In Who penalties. Plan? Uh, I don't think we know yet. If okay. I'm correct. We're going to go with that. Uh, but hey, thank you for making Lockdown Syracuse your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Lockdown Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. I'm Matt Bonaparte. He's Owen Valentine. We'll see you tomorrow with a Florida State game preview. They play Clemson. Play Clemson.